Hi everyone, my name is Aditya. And I'm Jonathan. Today we're going to be going over how to read and interpret a Walter climate diagram to determine what biome a region can be characterized as. And I'll be going over each biome and their characteristics. So before we begin interpreting these graphs, we need to understand how to properly read a Walter climate diagram. These diagrams provide graphical information on a region's monthly temperature and precipitation patterns over a one-year period, which allows us to visually compare these trends among different biomes. So now we're going to create a mock Walter climate diagram, beginning with the x-axis. The diagram's x-axis displays the months of the year, beginning with the coldest month. Now if that coldest month is in January or February, then you know that the biome is in the northern hemisphere, and if that coldest month is in June or July, then you know that the biome is in the southern hemisphere, and they have opposite winters of the northern hemisphere. Next, the y-axis display temperature, usually in degrees Celsius, and precipitation, normally in millimeters. It's important to identify these units that are used because they can be changed, especially for precipitation, which can sometimes be in centimeters instead of millimeters if there's very high rainfall, changing the general shape of the diagram. Now the rule of thumb is that for every 10 degree increase in temperature, you need 20 millimeters of rain to maintain vegetation growth. That's why the scale for the precipitation axis is twice the scale of the temperature axis with their zeros lined up. This allows us to quickly determine when a biome can support vegetation just by looking at the graph. So these diagrams have two curves, one usually blue representing precipitation and one, usually red, representing temperature. So now we can use these diagrams to determine when a particular biome can grow and support vegetation. So when the precipitation line is above the temperature line and the temperature is above zero, a biome can support growth. So in this particular biome, which is a temperate forest, the growing season is from February all the way to November, so most of the year. It's important to evaluate each line separately on its own axis because the values can vary greatly. We will now be talking about our biomes. A biome is a distinct physical environment inhabited by ecologically similar organisms with similar adaptations. We will be discussing the major biomes and going over their precipitation, temperature, vegetation, organisms, and growing season. A Walter climate diagram can be used to classify a region as a certain biome. Make sure to pause the video and copy down the chart for each biome. We will first be going over the tundra. The tundra has very little precipitation and severe winters as seen by our graph. The organisms that can survive these conditions include our polar bears, arctic foxes, and penguins. The growing season is very limited because um, as you can see, there's no overlap between our red line and our blue bars. And few plants can survive these conditions because of permafrost. And the few plants that can survive these conditions are very low to the ground. Now I'll be going over the boreal forest, which also has severe winters, but has a little more precipitation than the, than the tundra in the form of snow, allowing for slightly more growth. Because of this, you can find an abundance of conifers. You can also find moose, lynx, snowshoe hares, and beavers inhabiting this biome. Next is the temperate forest, which has a distinct winter season with frost and snow and a moist summer. The soil is fertile, which allows for more variation in the vegetation than the boreal forest. You can also find squirrels, bears, and bobcats living in this environment. The temperate grassland and shrubland biomes has hot summers and cold winters. This biome is dominated by grass and organisms such as bison, coyotes, and cheetahs. It is slightly drier than the temperate forest, but has similar temperatures. Deserts can be hot or cold depending on the season, but generally have low and sporadic precipitation year-round. Vegetation, such as cacti, can serve water through C4 and CAM photosynthesis, and plants with thorny leaves um, dominate this biome. Animals have concentrated urine and live underground to avoid overheating, and they include ants, gerbils, lizards, and scorpions. 
Our next biome is our tropical rainforest, which has the highest amount of precipitation of any biome. This biome has little variation in temperature and has wet and dry seasons, with a growing season that lasts basically year-round. Because of this biome's temperature and precipitation patterns, tons of diversity can exist. Plants use C3 photosynthesis, drip tips for excess water, and have thin, large leaves. They also have expansive root buttresses to more effectively absorb nutrients from the nutrient-deficient soil. Monkeys, dung beetles, and jaguars can be found in this biome. Finally, we'll be going over the tropical savanna slash seasonal forests. This biome is similar to the tropical rainforest, but has more distinct wet and dry seasons, with more changes in precipitation. Disturbances are common and help maintain this biome. Giraffes, gazelles, and elephants inhabit this land. Now, pause the video and copy the following chart describing all of our biomes. And that's our video on biomes. Thanks for watching. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.